Hello, hello, hello everybody, welcome. Ah, here we go. Welcome to my unschooling talk number 24. I have, uh, I'm looking forward to introduce you to my 24th guest with the topic of unschooling. And this time, it is a Polish woman, a Polish mom of two girls. And I'm so happy to talk with her. She will join us very, very soon. Ria Sokol. She is already to come into my life. Here she is. Hello. Hi. So good to see you. Hello, yeah, Ria. You too. I'm so happy we to, I have you on this talk today. It's on unschooling. It's my 24th. It's my 24th talk on this topic on unschooling. And I'm talking with uh, mainly German-speaking um, moms and dads, but sometimes also international. And you are from Poland, my first mother and mom from Poland. I'm so happy about you having um, joining me here. And um, yeah, my, my intention, why I'm doing those talks, is to raise the awareness that we have the opportunity not only the opportunity, but also the option of raising our children without school or with school or changing, you know, from school to non-school. Um, and uh, we are free on uh, feeling into all the needs of ourselves and of our kids and, um, and um, following that and um, leading, have, having a self-led educational path on, on that. So, would you be so kind and introduce yourself? Um, Ria, I think a lot of people know you, but maybe not everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation. And it's, it's such, I was thinking today, it's such a magical thing because it's the internet. Like, what a beautiful opportunity it is that we can meet somewhere in a space and then we can talk and we can extend, expand and share our knowledge, our experience. We can make connections. We can create so much magic from that. And this Absolutely. was one of the things that helped me also in the choice because it's like, it's all about the choice. I could have a choice what I'm choosing for my children and for their education. So I, I'm myself, I'm a mom of two, but I'm an artist, I'm a speaker, I'm a public person. And I, I share my experience. I share everything that I went through in my life, but also in my trainings. I do tons of things around abundance, about conscious creation, about showing people we always have choice always 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 have choice and if we don't have to cho the choice we can create the choice so it's always coming back to the same thing so that realization and huge recognition inside of me allowed me to see that i am not stuck that i'm not stuck as mother that i'm not stuck with education and that and that i can i can create something extraordinary for my children um, especially that I didn't have very good experience with my schools so that really opened my mind I allowed it to open me what can I provide and what are the options for me and for them yes well I think a lot of um, moms and dads who um are open for for new ways of educating and and it's not even only educating you know to me it's even a too narrow focus already because it's what we want is to to bring children up and to explore a life with them and to um, hold space for their own creative expression and uh, actually it's not more than that it's like um, like we don't have a curriculum for them to learn walk or talking, you know. Actually, they, they learn anything else that's 
interesting for them in the same kind of way through curio curiosity and um, engagement mm -hmm. and um, and it's not really it's it's the sparkle the sparkle that needs and it's not uh, something technical that's needed for that what's your experience on that this is my point of view literally the same literally the same and as my children went to this it was called democratic school which was based on the unschooling and the difference between the unschooling and homeschooling was tremendous because in our school it was literally what you were saying so children wouldn't be, be sitting in the class uh, in the classes and classrooms and learning maths but they would be for example playing together and pretending they are supermarkets and the one person one child is a customer and the other per, and that the other child is a cashier and they have to exchange money This is how much it costs. This is how much I give you. How much do I have to give you back? You have to count. Okay, how do we do that? And this is how they learned counting. Not from sitting in the classroom and writing one times two is two and so forth. It was just like very simple games that they would be naturally inventing because they were there you know, six hours a day, eight hours a day. So they naturally, because they love playing, children love playing, especially when they are six or seven, they would be thinking about different games. And then there will be a group of adults who will help them. Okay, how do I give the cash back to, to, the, to my, you know, customer? Because they paid me for the bread, you know? And then the adult would be saying, okay, this is how we count. So these are the, this is the currency. These are the money. And this is how they, they were um, learning maths. And so it was natural. Like children are naturally interested in growing, in learning, in finding out. But it's just that they differ. So the curiosity can go into different directions but ultimately all of them at some point want to play in supermarkets so all of them ultimately will learn how to count and they will learn math and and, and it regards to everything else that they were meant to be taught in the school so exactly what you're saying the curiosity giving them an option and giving them allowing them to follow their own pace, their mm. own timing, what feels right for you, what do you want to do, do you want to play supermarket or maybe something else or maybe you prefer to read or whatever. It's like mm -hmm. you decide and that gives them, that shows them that they have a choice, that they are the creators. It teaches them the responsibility. It teach, teaches them the autonomy also sovereignty mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's a whole new level for children and one thing that sticks so out when you're saying that this is um they can stay in the playfulness they can stay in the playing and really if we could um we weren't unconditioned from the playing life would be so much easier. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think that as an adult, we have to unlearn the seriousness, you know? <laughs> yes. And it's like, re be reminded about the playfulness because yes. the schools are taking it away, unfortunately. I see. Uh, yes, it's, my, it's the same observation uh, for, from me. And I, I sometimes imagine in a world It, where the playfulness never was um, untrained, you know, taken away. Like, I mean, yeah. we, could, we could really, and I think you're a perfect example of living life, we could do life very playful, very light, very easy, and um, um, it would not take anything away. On the contrary, it would add a lot of fulfillment and joy and 
open hearts uh, to this world. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're living um, currently in Poland, right? Yes, we've been here for good since the last year and a half. Okay, and you're originally from Poland as well. Yes, I'm Polish. Yes. You're Polish. I love Poland, by the way. I love ah. the Marzulski and I was paddling ah. there a few times. And uh, well, Austria is not that far away. There is only yes. the Czech Republic. Yeah, very close. Yes, you're very yes, close. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm not very uh, informed of how is the school system in Poland. What do you, can you describe it a little bit? What's sure. is it? Is, yeah, please. So it's eight years of primary school, like first is the preschool and you can go there like more or less from th three years old until six, then from six, eight years. And then there is four years of high school and then you can go to university. And obviously there are public schools, there are private schools, there is homeschooling and also there are these democratic schools and all the kind of alternative options that are mainly like formally they are based on homeschooling but they alter in terms of system strategy structures you know all the inner um, commitments and adjustments for the parents that are coming all together and co-creating it co-creating the rules co-creating everything that works for them there and um how is um how is the law in terms of to have children go to school how legal is homeschooling is this an option that the government is okay with or how are the circumstances so in th those you terms? have an obligation like it's it's uh it's regulated um that you have to go to school um and homeschooling is legal and actually there is a huge uh, thing in Poland last month because the government is suggesting that they want to remove homeschooling. So there are different actions happening of people who are homeschooling and, and especially that during pandemic, like people realized the possibilities that open when you're homeschooling. So then a lot of families didn't come back to school so I don't know what's the reason to to cut it but I know that there is negotiations now in in the government about it okay well there is uh, this um, this is something that happens in in a lot of countries all over all over the world right now um, okay is it also happening in Austria yes mm -hmm. yeah. um, well it's I, I mean, it, it, I think it, ha it has happened everywhere that people became more awareness about the option of, home, of, you know, raising their kids at home and how, you know, some, some, for, for some family, it wasn't a good uh, option, but for a lot of families, they felt this uh, freedom in that. And um, now a lot of the governments I see um, feel that they might lose control over over exactly. that part um so how is the unschooling regulate uh, or the homeschooling regulated in poland so far is there ha do kids have to do an exam or is it really free do you have a curriculum H how closely it is is it uh, looked at from the government it depends because just now there are schools in poland there are like an expert, like specializing in homeschooling. So then they would be providing all the materials that the student have to um, um, go through during the year. And then at the end of the year, and I think also in the midst of the year, they have to have an exam, depending on the age of the children. It's once or twice a year. And, and it also depends on the school because there are different schools in different mm -hmm. uh, parts of the world, of uh, Poland. So it depends on their, also their systems. But normally it's like they just give you the materials and you have to come at the end of the year to, to pass the exam. 
and then you have the papers from that school. I see. And this is what happened in Austria in this past uh, school year. They um, made those ex exams more strict. Before you could choose the school, now they choose the school and um, it's regulated much more strict than it was mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. My son is 13 and um, he never went to school. So we are on this path for, he just entered the room when I was saying that uh, we, we are on this path for six or seven years now. Mm -hmm. And this past year um, held circumstances where I didn't feel good to put him into this kind of situation because I could already feel that there is this kind of fight going on, you know, from, mm -hmm. from the authorities towards those families and I didn't see it fair to put our children in the front line so I wasn't alone with that meanwhile there are 200 families in Austria which is really a lot um, if you think that before the pandemic there were only 2,500 children in all Austria who weren't in school, which is not a lot. It's, no. I mean, it was 1% or something. And meanwhile, there are already 200 families who... 200? Families who are going to the highest court of Austria to, uh, you know, to get... A standing at least I mean you know I'm not that naive to think that you know we, we have a, a, a law next year that uh, legalize uh, unschooling but um, there are 200 families who are um, preparing a lawsuit wow. against the wow. government you know things can happen like if we I know history like there were such a crazy uh, things happening when people were super focused and like, there's nothing holding me back. Shoot so, sorry. So when, when people are really dedicated and really clear with their intentions, like magic can happen. Like I told you, yes, trust yes. it. Actually, it's 200 families. It's huge. With, yes, this is definitely huge. So, mm -hmm. um, and I just had a, a talk with a mom from Quebec, French Canada, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And she told me the same story from there. I mean, same, you know, tighter regulations from the government and more, more people, more families within that realm of unschooling and, and more families realizing the difference between homeschooling and unschooling, which is yeah. huge. Exactly. But it's not obvious if you never have been um, going into this kind of topic. Would you explain? Well, these are it? two completely different, two completely different things, actually, um, in terms of uh, realization. You know, when you're re when you're trying to do the homeschooling, like as like homeschooling, like being a teacher to your children or hiring teachers to come to your home to do the homeschooling. Like this is homeschooling. Um, but then the unschooling is what I've already explained. It's like, how do we do everything with our children and allow them to be guided by their nature, by their talents, by like this, this inner knowing that they are born with and allow them to go in their own pace, to, to go through whatever they they want to my experience is also that it the, the unschooling um, uh, in our in Poland there were these democratic schools that were based on unschooling so in terms of law it was homeschooling but it was not teaching them in homes but it was the parents that were coming together like a group of five, mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30 families that are coming together. There is maybe someone who is holding it, but then they are all deciding how, what kind of reality, school reality, or actually it's like a community reality that they want to create. And 
from my experience, uh, because we were traveling a lot and we were in different kinds of systems and unschooling and schools. So I know that it differs depending on what community is creating the, the school and the community, the whole um, environment for children. But in general, it's based on creation, basically. The unschooling is based on choice and creation and freedom and respect and trust and love, communication, conscious communication. So it's, it's like a whole new level of what we can offer to our kids. And it's extraordinary. Because we are, we are believing in the potential, right? In the raw and natural potential of the children and, uh, and respect that and go in contact with and, and hold, hold the space for that. Mm. Beautifully said. Thank you. What was your path with your daughters? When, when they, you know, how did it look like? Uh, it was, I feel like I was walking in the jungle because, um, <laughs> literally, because it was 15 years ago. Well, my, my first daughter was born 15 years ago. So then I, I wanted to send her to preschool uh, when she was three. So it was 12 years ago. And like the communities weren't as abundant as they are now. So the only option that I found back then was Montessori system. So it was American International Montessori Preschool uh, based on Maria Montessori system. She was this enlightened, for me, she was enlightened um, creator who created this whole uh, alternative option for learning and for being around together so this is how we started and we stayed there until I found out about the unschooling so immediately I think first I just took her home and we were actually there was half a year of us hiring teach like teachers people who are mm -hmm. who were coming to our house we were like two or three families and there were people who we were finding somewhere on facebook and other places so one was a person who would be teaching them french the other person would be someone who would be taking them to the forest for three hours a day another person who was coming to explain to them the board games. Like we had different people who would be doing that. And then I found out about unschooling. So actually we started doing it before we knew it existed. And then we found out about democratic schools that were literally, it was, they were just opening in Warsaw. There was one in whole Poland, but it wasn't in Warsaw. And then there were two new upcoming uh, democratic schools based on uh, unschooling in Warsaw. And it was opening in 2012, I think. Mm -hmm. So this is when they started, 12 or 13, this is when they started going uh, to this democratic school. And this is when we also started traveling. So they would be little bit here, but also in Bali, also in Costa Rica, also in other places in the world and where we were traveling, I would be finding a community wherever we were traveling and joining them. So this was our adventure uh, through so many years. And, and it was incredible because it, it allowed us to, to be free and to explore. And they speak so many languages just now. They have so many friends around the world. It was challenging at times because it was a lot of moving. But literally last week I was speaking with my daughters and they said, well, there were challenges, but so many benefits from that. So many things they love about it, about this lifestyle that they had. Beautiful. How old are they now? Now they are 12 and 15. Mm -hmm. And um, when you were traveling, how, how much time did you spend on one place or how, how fast was the moving? 
Well, it depended. Um, we, for sure, it would be going for at least half a year or four months, something like that. So it would be really like going somewhere. Normally, it would be during winter time. Mm -hmm. So we avoiding the winter in Poland. And then um, coming to Poland when it was spring and winter time. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of moving. Also because I was working, um, traveling. So it was convenient for me because I traveled a lot. I was giving workshops and lectures. So it was convenient for me. And um, yeah, it was perfect. Like I could, I could rule the world. <laughs> And I guess they have learned a lot just by watching you uh, creating your lifestyle with your business, right? And your fulfillment from that. That's true. And this is what I always keep telling to, to my audience. It's like how to make your children happy, make yourself happy. Like mm -hmm. how to teach them the boundaries, teach yourself the boundaries, how to teach them self-love start yes. in yourself unconditionally yes it all comes back to to us and we are the biggest inspiration for our children we are the role models we are the most important you know like gods in their lives so everything we do has such an impact on them mm -hmm. it's so crucial that we we find the fire in our hearts mm -hmm. and we inspire them, not from talking to them, but from igniting that fire in our hearts and letting it just, you know, create the most extraordinary life. And then they just are in awe and they want to participate and they want to mm -hmm. create and they can see that everything is possible, that they are extraordinary, that we are all walking miracles and geniuses and mm -hmm. we we are such a potentiality, walking potentiality in every single second. Oh, thank you. We need to <laughs> pause there a little bit to really have this um, mm. dropping in. Because I think this is really, really the last, the last twist in this paradigm shift that I see what's going on in so many areas of this you know of this planet and of course also in how do we relate to our kids and there's is this um already um evolved idea of you know looking into the needs and um and into relationship with the children but I think it's even a step further to not, you know, stay focused only on the needs and, you know, sacrificing our own lives for the needs of the children. But, you know, doing exactly that, what you just said, like going for your own fulfillment and of course have, you know, watch also your kids with that. But, you know, creating this big, big space where everyone has has you know, room for their own um, exploration. Yeah. Yeah, and then this is how we pass our wisdom from that. And we teach them how to pass the wisdom to another generation. It's like we have such a responsibility on our shoulders when we become parents. It's not lo any longer only about us. It's becoming also about what we are passing and what they are going to pass because... It's like generational, um, generational, generational game that we're playing and that we are creating. So, yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's a dance between like, how can I be for myself with love simultaneously with being for my kids with love? Which is at the same time, in my experience, you know, the hugest challenge in life anyway, <laughs> you know, to, to repro, to first of all, to see your own programming, 
mm. while you try to make it better with your kids, yeah. while you try to reprogram yourself oh. and do it all at the same time. And, um, and it's, uh, it is challenging at a, in, in, in a lot of ways, but it's so rewarding at the same time. It is. And I think that the, the motherhood, the parenthood, in a way, is a really beautiful way to show us our programs. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is happening to show us our power because we can stop. Like my experience is that I could stop and look at my programs and get stuck on my programs and get stuck in blaming myself and fixing myself and, mm -hmm. you know, beating myself up for having the programs or there was a second option that I found out in the meantime. It was like, okay, this is my program. I'm going to rewrite it now. And this is literally what I started doing with my kids. Like literally if I messed things up with my children and I really was like, oh my God, I really regret it. I started literally rewriting the situation. I would be telling them if it was possible, I would be telling them, listen, I didn't like, I'm not proud of what I've done. I can see it was my subconscious playing out and my suggestion is to change the memory let's replay the situation again and i'm going to behave the way that i'm going to be proud of myself so i don't harm you so i don't harm myself and so that we can remember the beautiful memory as opposed to remembering some kind of situation that will be stuck and that will create resentment so this is when the motherhood became an opportunity for me to realize my power to realize i can change i can not only create my future and i can not only have impact on my presence but also i can change my past and it helped me with forgiveness with the guilt with all these you know old story motherhood wounds that we carry from generations and it really supported me in that so it's almost like i i i recognize the trampoline from the programs like i can use it as a trampoline to rewrite it and it's like i cannot express with words what a journey for me it has been thanks to that it's magnificent mm, beautiful Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. It is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm having two questions now and I'm deciding which one first. Um, let's go with that one. Um, I'm not sure how your family um, structure is. Um, is the dad of the children with you? Are you living together or so may I this ask? Impressive. This is another <laughs> extraordinary um, story because we separated seven years ago. So our children were six and nine, something like that. And then we created new relationships and we created patchwork family. And actually, uh, because it was like, I'm going to get a divorce that I never wanted to experience because my parents were divorced and I was like, it's the worst thing ever. I'm never going to do that. And obviously it happened. So <laughs> that was like, okay, how do I, how do I rewrite the story about broken family, about, you know, shattered and separation? How can I make it a story about abundance? And I realized I'm going to make it not a broken family. I'm going to create an expand, extended family. I'm gonna, like, I created the most extraordinary relationship with the partner of my ex-husband. We are like sisters, literally. It took us years, but we love each other so much and we support each other. The same with my ex-husband. And actually, they just had twins. So it's like, our family is tremendous now. It's like our daughters, their daughters, And it's like, it's beautiful also as an inspiration for people that it is possible. Like, we don't have to have the label of, you know, it didn't work out kind of story with our ex-partners or ex-husbands. We can say like, our story is extraordinary. 
And it's not based on us being together. It's based on our friendship, on our freedom, on our conscious parenting. And like, I, I highly recommend it. Like it makes life so much easier and so much happier and so much like next level, I would say. Ria, I didn't know that part. I, I di actually, I didn't really know much um, about your life. And that one, I didn't know at all. And uh, I'm in a very similar situation. Wow, <laughs> high five! <laughs> How cool is that? The, um, I, call, I call him my parents' partner, my parenting partner. Uh, we separated four years ago. And um, actually, it took us a couple years to even mm -hmm. get to this point, mm -hmm. not because we, we didn't know, we already were sure we wanted to separate our intimate relationship, but we didn't know how to do this as a family. Yeah. And we were both aware that this part is not undoable. We are family as soon as we have children or a child. And uh, so we took us a couple years to figure out how can we deal with that um, if we still both want to be conscious in our parenting, both want to be near our son, both want to keep up a relationship, a friendship with each other. Yeah. Because un uh, um, without that, a, a conscious parenting wouldn't work, right? If we are fighting with each other, how can we be conscious with our kid? So uh, in the end, we figured out that I just had to move in the neighbor apartment mm -hmm. and everything was perfectly dealt with. <laughs> Amazing. Hashtag it's possible. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. I love and, it. Um, so yeah, for my son, it was never this thing of we separated. It was just when we moved into the neighbor apartment. Wow, it's so inspiring. And actually that move for him was also a big relief because of course, before we separated into the, the apartments, um, the atmosphere, the family atmosphere was, was much, much more tight, of course, because <laughs> you know we didn't want to stay. We felt stuck in the one way. And then all that relieved and of, all of a sudden it was really easy to, to be friends again, to support each other, to be heart open to all those things where within those tightness, of course, we felt different parts mm -hmm. of, it, you mm -hmm. know, which was yeah, part of the process. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's so beautiful, so inspiring. I'm so happy to hear that. Yes. And um, do you have a partner now? Yes. And how, how is he involved in that? Well, or, um, I mean, if it's too personal, you know, I, let me know. I don't share it so much just now publicly, but it's like when people ask me, how do we do it? I literally want to say, I just decide that I will. And then it's almost like I decide what's going to happen. I decide I'm going to have incredible family. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have incredible relationship. I'm going to have the most beautiful memories when we will be getting old and thinking about how it was and never make ourselves feeling not enough or failures or second place or second choice. It's like... We want to create the life of our dreams and we are all dedicated to do it and to create it every single day, knowing mm -hmm. that every single day it's getting better. Every mm -hmm. single day we have more opportunities because our consciousness is wider. So our dreams are bigger. And being committed to that, it's almost like it's not my job to figure out, to figure out the strategy. The strategy mm -hmm. will come. Mm -hmm. If we have a problem, we resolve it because we're a great family, period. If we have a struggle, we go through it because we're incredible patchwork family and we do it. 
period. And it's not like oh, maybe we're doing something wrong or it's not like I failed or someone else failed or you're not their mom or you're not their dad. Like we are the greatest family. We have the most incredible relationships. We support each other. We love each other. We respect each other. And it's a decision. And from that decision, I swear, I swear to God, it's the fundament of everything. From here, everything is possible. Conscious pause to have it, <laughs> you know, uh, breathe it in again. And thank you also for that because um, I... I totally agree. And at the same time, it's something I needed to hear right now. <laughs> mm. uh, like, you know, we all need to be reminded on those yes. things uh, every once in a while. Um, we have the situation where um, my, my parents' partner and his girlfriend for the past three years, we, we had a beautiful relationship as well. She and her actually, they got to know through me. <laughs> and then some issues came up the last few months and um, they were very painful for all three of us and of mm -hmm. course for my son as well and um, and it's you know it, it's sometimes really difficult to on one hand I can see where the pain comes from her part But then I also feel the, the blame for that. So it's not always so easy to, to really figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you know, if the tension is in between. But then um, also, I really never, never um, let go of the trust that we will figure it out. Because, you know, with my, my parents' partner and me, we had the same issue. And there were moments where we didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But we, we still were, you know, going through it. And this, mm -hmm. is, this is the same here. So thank you for that. Oh, I'm so happy. It's like we, we don't meet by accident, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. But I can tell you, it's like I remember the times when we would be like all of us crying our eyes out. And feeling like this is this is the end. Like there is there is a wall, and like we with all our trust, like literally, like how do you walk through the wall? And it was like all of us, like we, like what do we do now? There is not even like not even a thing that we can that we can move. Like no direction because after you hit a wall, you just like it's literally nothing to do, and the thing that supported us from there was always the same thing. Like we are so committed that no matter how hard we blame each other, no matter how much we hate sorry, no, no matter how much, no matter how much we hated each other at times, it was like, I'm going to hate you. And I know that you are my soul sister, soul brother for life. And I'm never going to give up on our relationship. And this is what helps. What helped us was like, okay, I hate yes. you now, but you are my soul sister. You are my soul brother. Period. <sighs> okay. And like yeah. over, over again, and then something shifts in the energy. So mm -hmm. I mm. trust and believe that with that trust that you're talking about, you you can move the mountains. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so let's move into this other question. I was, you know, <laughs> yeah. my, my other question was, oh, um, while you were traveling, you probably have experienced a lot of, I guess, alternative um, schooling systems all over the world. Do you have any favorite um, countries on that topic or was it is it not really the country but this the school or the community per, per se or do you have you know what what sticks out in your experience uh with the schooling and the education communities in those uh, countries you have been 
Well, the more I was traveling, the more I was seeing that there are so many choices that it's the matter of the place that you resonate with the most and then finding a community there or even creating one. So it's almost like, like first I make a choice, where do I want to be? Do I prefer Bali or do I prefer Costa Rica? For us, it was like we tasted a little bit of Asia and then we went to Costa Rica and it was like where we're done. Like it was like it was the end of the traveling because we fell in love with Costa Rica so deeply that there were no obstacles that could stop us from being there. And then obviously, as we were getting deeper into knowing the land, knowing the community, knowing the country, we we're finding more and more opportunities. And there are so, especially in Costa Rica. I know. If I had newborns just now, like I probably would go there until they are seven or 10 and spend the first 10 years with them there. there. And then I would move to the city because somehow, but it's also, again, what I, what I feel internally. For me, it's like the first seven or 10 years are the most important. And then just now, my children are in, t like they are in private schools because they feel so confident so clear, so uh, like untouch, untouchable. Like I feel such a power from them. I feel they have such a strong recognition of their possibilities, of their potential and everything that I'm like, if you want that, like if you feel that this is the best for you, like I'm good with that. So I feel so much uh, like it, it's rooted in them. So... I'm okay with that. But I know so many parents that are like, no way, until they are 18, no system. Maybe after they are 18, they can decide they can go and study. But oh, really? No yes. I know parents like that. I know parents who are also, also very liberated and spiritual who would be saying, I'm dealing with system. Although I know all its, all its flaws and all the consequences, like I deeply trust that the fundaments are at home. So if I build the trust, the power, the faith, the hope, everything in my children at home, nothing can touch them in, in school. But it's all our convictions. It's all mm -hmm. our past. It's all our trauma. It's all our, like, what is aligned with me now? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like there is no perfect model for children. There is perfect model for us as parents at a certain time. What are we believing the most in at the moment? So coming back to your question, Costa Rica my number one definitely for the first 10 years when they are just having um i remember my children would be having uh meetings lessons like how to take care of our planet and it would be every day 45 minutes of lessons teaching them how to take care of our parents and once a week going during the day during lessons going to clear the beach it would be oblig obligatory lesson so it's like they are being raised in the jungle in the nature running barefoot and also simultaneously having english lessons literature spanish lessons and so forth so it would be like really perfect balance but i'm also, I'm talking about private schools, private associations and options that are happening there. And they are not made by Costa Ricans. They are made by expats mm -hmm. from United States and mostly Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know as well a lot of families who, who live in Costa Rica, also German-speaking families. So I, I have heard that before, that Costa Rica is a beautiful option. And I have been traveling myself a lot, also in South and, and uh, Central America, but I've never been to Costa Rica. Uh -huh. um, so I'd love to go there one day. You're and, going. Uh, it's here. <laughs> I mean, for teenager, just now, 
it's not the best option because I don't know how is your teenager, but mine are like super, you know, socially and city girls. They like to go to the restaurants. They like to meet friends, going to cinemas and so forth, which in the jungle is not that common. (laughs) (laughs) I could imagine that he would like the jungle right now. Yeah. So you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Yeah. Yes. As long as he had someone to do martial arts with, I think he would be fine. And I guess Amazing. we would find that there. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Definitely. Yes, of course, they were training martial arts there too. Yeah. 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 yeah awesome. Um, you know, I'm, I'm standing really for this um, idea of a self led education a free and self-led education Mm -hmm. and for me as well this is not the one path this doesn't mean you have to unschool this doesn't mean you have to homeschool this doesn't mean you have to go to school you can do all of it or none of it or however you want to combine it um, as long as it makes the family the child most of all and the family happy and um, um I can see that within this realm, there is, like everywhere, there is a lot of dogma as well, right? You know, a lot of people, like you said, until 18, they have to do the alternative thing. Or on the other hand, I mean, this is very common. Until 18, you can do what what I'm saying in the regular thing. This is the most common thing we know. Um, But I think really, you know, having, having the child you know, leading their own path while we are guiding and holding the space for them. Um, I also can see how magnificent this is. I mean, I have seen my son manifesting so many things for his life, which I really didn't see happening because of all my experience and all my, you know, predictions on to how can it work (laughs) and uh, he didn't have that and just wanted it and just believed in it and just held the energy and boom it was there yeah yeah and it's beautiful and I think to summarize our conversation it's like it's mainly to show the abundance of the the options that we have like we can we can provide everything to our children. We can show them so many realities, so many um, like ways to do life. And then it's like the fundaments is our love, our faith in them and our commitment to continue showing them you are the ultimate creator just like i am for my life you are for your life you can manifest you can create you can do whatever you want so we can teach that whether our school our child is in normal school or uh, unschooling or homeschooling or montessori it doesn't matter the thing is that we have a choice because so many parents are coming to me and they're like, but what do I do? I hate it. But what do I do? What other choice do I have? And I'm like, well, you have a lot of choice. Like, look at that. So I think that what I love about our conversation is just to show like there are options and there is not no good way Mm -hmm. or bad way. It's like you choose, you make it perfect for yourself and for your kids. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ria. Thank you. It Thank was you so lovely for... to see you and get to know you better. Thank you. I'm um, sending all my love to Warsaw. And, um... Thank you and sending you love, sending you so much love to Austria and all of your community also. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Mwah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye.